so welcome Anna Wahlqvist to the podcast. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm quite excited. Like um, as a lot of you know, I'm a bit of an NDE uh, nerd. I love NDEs. I think they're fascinating. And uh, Anna has two. I think had two NDEs. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and um, and and you had something that happened to you called the void, which um, uh, I understand to be not maybe the most positive experience, but in the end, or, or, or as it is as a whole, it's been a good thing anyway. Uh, yeah, if, if I've instance so, correct. Yeah, absolutely. So, so and uh, you're in the midst midst of also uh, writing a biography you told mm-hmm. me so mm-hmm. this is why I find this very interesting and if you enjoy today's interview and want to know more then uh, I'll uh, um, link uh, her below so you can just contact her and if you want to buy her book free afterwards you're welcome but, um, yeah so we'll, we'll just start take it from the beginning and let's just dive right into the first NDE that you had and mm-hmm. what happened what was it like just before and like what was your life like mm-hmm. before just briefly and what led yeah. up to that yeah exactly so uh in short this was uh the 2014 mm-hmm. uh i think it was boxing day the day after christmas day um i have three kids and all of them lived with me at the time and my um uh well husband we're not married anymore not together anymore but we we used to be at that time and um I was uh, having a good life. It was intense, you know, work and kids and everything, but I was feeling fine. Um, I come from a background that's very, like, scientific. Mm-hmm. Um, I am used to uh, being able to uh, explain things that happen to people, to me or in the world in, like, scientific terms, uh, maybe uh, in psychology, you know, things like that. But no one ever really uh, talked about religion or spirituality in my family and my upbringing and not in in the context where i were at the time so this came really uh, out of the blue mm-hmm. for me and um well that day i was out running some errands with my youngest uh, son he was uh, six years old at the time and we had yeah we'd been out in some different shops and uh, everything was fine. It was he was a bit hungry, so we went into McDonald's, and we sat down and we had our meals. And he wanted to uh, walk a few meters to this, you know, this kind of glass cupboard where they have the little McDonald's toys. Mm-hmm. So he stood there. I could see him. He was just a couple of meters away from me, and uh, I I enjoyed my coffee. Well, it wasn't very good, but it was hot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, McDonald's yeah. coffee was fine. Uh, a few minutes by myself and everything was cool. And the restaurant was like kind of a, a good energy. So I sat there and had my coffee. And then I was just going to pick up like a lip gloss or something from my purse. So I turned my head like down like this. Mm-hmm. And uh, then it happened. I kind of, well, I it took like, two seconds I heard this like a buzzing noise and then I was in this void Mm -hmm. and uh, everything disappeared the whole world around the usual the normal world that we used to um, I disappeared like my identity my ego my person uh, but I was still there and (laughs) and boy was I there (laughs) I mean, this was like a consciousness that's kind of uh, a thousand times, a million times stronger than the consciousness you can ever experience. I have done some meditation, uh, especially after this, uh, and it never comes even close. It's not Mm -hmm. close. It was like, um, it was like I was, this is so hard uh, to put into words. It was like I was life. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was consciousness. And uh, it, it wasn't like I was an, I, an, an entity inside something bigger. It was like I was the mm-hmm. large vastness of consciousness. 
Mm-hmm. And um, could, could you, sorry to interrupt you there, but could you remember then or, or think that you were Anna just moments no. ago or no? You no, were just, nothing. No. Everything just disappeared. All the thoughts, all the language, uh, everything was gone. Mm. Uh, so I had no, I, I, I wasn't wondering where I was. There was no one there to wonder. There was no one there to ask those questions. Mm. And I wasn't scared, probably because I wasn't there. Yeah. <laughs> in that, in, in, in that, um, in the usual way that you are. So, um, and the, the thing is that this lasted for, I have understood like afterwards, that it must have been around 20 seconds, mm-hmm. but it, it felt like an eternity. It just went on and on and on. And time was, uh, I would say that there was an aspect of time, but it was only, only now. Mm. I mean, normally you have this like um, uh, perception of that time has passed, something has happened, and something is probably going to happen. But those aspects were, the, were gone. It was only now. And it was actually like, it was also like a, a space that never ended. Mm-hmm. And, but the time and the space and the consciousness were like the same thing. It was like, it was a, um, <laughs> it was a whole. They were not separable from each other. So it mm-hmm. felt like I was the presence, but I was also the present moment. And I was also the space. Yeah. Uh, it's really it almost, <laughs> almost sounds it's like really... you became one with God or something. And I know it's it's hard to take in like for somebody listening that may not have had any kind of experience like this. No, sure. It is hard because obviously we're having our human experience at this moment. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah. so but you're explaining it beautifully and uh, you know, so so right. yeah, so what happened after that? Like what happened when you were you were in the void and yeah, so I um I was there and I can't say I was waiting because there was no one there to, uh, to wait, <laughs> but it, it, it went on and on like forever. Uh, and it was just this calm place. And, um, and then suddenly I, there was this kind of bubbling with me. I, I wasn't, I, I didn't have any, questions still I wasn't wondering or asking any questions in my head uh, I, I didn't have access to my brain I think or the thinking part of the brain yeah. but there was something there with me and uh, like a like a texture like a bubbling texture or maybe uh, a water over rocks and a, a little creek or a bubbling water in a glass or in a, uh, or in a pot or something like that and after a few seconds more, I realized that it was a sound. Uh, so I heard a sound, but I didn't know what it was. Um, and then uh, there were two kind of kinds of thoughts. This was way before I even got my identity back or my feeling of identity. There were two thoughts that I got. And the first one was, I have a son. I have a child. Where is my child? Mm. And I, I couldn't see. I couldn't understand what I was seeing. I, I had gotten my eyesight back, but I couldn't understand what I was seeing. But I, I had a feeling of my son, and that kind of dragged me back. I think that thought of him. So I realized I have to understand something about what's going on around me. Uh, so. I looked around and I saw him. I didn't know his name, but I recognized him and he stood there and everything was fine. And the second thought I got, got was like, uh, not where am I, but is it okay in here? Is everything okay in here? How is the energy in here? Is there a, a risk or for him? And everything was fine. People were like eating and talking and in low voices like this. And I was like, okay, so check on the sun, check on the energy in the room everything is okay and then the rest came back like my thoughts my identity the rest of my life all my memories I knew who I was what my name everything 
um, in, in a few seconds. So that was about it. Uh, so yeah, and we uh, got up. There was this woman sitting across the aisle. I had um, said hello to her bef before because she was, I worked at a school and she was a mother of one of the students. So we, before we ate, we just said like, hi, hi, how are you? And uh, when, when I uh, came back, she was like looking at me like, are you okay? Like this. And I realized that I had been sitting like this oh <laughs> sitting up all the time and i was yeah. like oh i'm a bit drooling <laughs> <laughs> and, and <laughs> I, I hadn't <laughs> uh, but she looked at me like are you okay can i help you and i was like oh, I'm, I'm okay i'm okay i'm fine so i i got my son we got our jackets on and we left and i i took the not very wise decision to drive back home but i it, it turned out fine i came Back and my you remembered how to drive <laughs> yeah I remembered how to drive I remembered everything then and I called my mom and she was like uh I couldn't understand I couldn't understand any of this at all because I had no idea this was an NDE mm. I had heard about NDEs but I had never heard about anything like that and I thought I had just experienced some kind of medical condition that can obviously make you be conscious in a totally different way than than usual and I thought that if people must know about this. I mean, science must know about this. The medicals must know about this. Uh, but no one did. There was a, an ambulance that came to my home just because my mom was uh, worried when I called her. And she said, maybe you had a, like a, uh, an epileptic uh, episode or <laughs> yeah. something like that. Uh, and they thought maybe they there was something wrong with there was this nerve, this cranial nerve, is called the vagus nerve, I think, yeah. mm -hmm. or the vagus nerve, yeah, maybe. Yeah, vagus. And they, they, yeah, vagus, yeah. <laughs> and they, they said maybe there was something, uh, it can be like lagging sometimes, so it takes time for it to adjust the blood flow uh, in the body, and I probably had some lack of oxygen to the brain, so uh, that was what they said. But um, this was a very strange period because I really tried to understand what had happened and there were no answers i couldn't find anything my doctors were just like well we don't have a clue um and um, my the friends i talked to i didn't really have the courage to talk to everybody because yeah. i you know you don't want people to be concerned about you and worried for you or maybe think that you're a little nuts or yeah. <laughs> something like that <laughs> or have been watching too much uh, too many strange movies or googled too much or joined some strange sect or <laughs> yeah. yeah i've had that one thrown yeah. at me <laughs> yeah the sect thing or... the sect thing yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that was the first episode mm. And how did that in like change your um, perception of, of life uh, at all, like from the first one? Uh, it did, it, even more after the second one. Um, but after the first one, what happened was actually, I tried to push this experience out of my life and out of my brain because I couldn't understand it. I couldn't make any sense of it. Mm. And there was no one to really talk about to about it I thought later on I realized that there are always people that you can talk to you just need to find them yeah. but at, at that point I, I, I didn't talk to people much about this and um, but even though I tried to push this away uh, I started to change I um, what can I say like empathy has not been a big problem for me before either but suddenly it was like I could really when I stood in front of a person, I could like, um, it, it was like some, sometimes like I couldn't really feel myself anymore. It was like there was, there's no one here. Yeah. It's like I, uh, air can blow right through me. This is empty. Mm -hmm. And uh, when someone stood in front of me, maybe uh, could be criticizing me for something. Uh, before, I think I was always like, having a, some kind of a veil around here like a like a shield not, not very hard but still like a little defense you know and that was so normal for me before so I, I I didn't ever think about it but after this it was like there is nothing here so 
when I listened to a person, I was never afraid anymore mm -hmm. for what the person was going to say to me. Maybe you recognize this. <laughs> you oh, talked I know. about ego death once. Yeah, uh, I, yeah, exactly. Well, I had and I understood it during the ego death, and I have a much also a much bigger understanding of that now it sounds like to mm. me like you really have come really really far in that area I used to really really care what other people thought about me yeah I didn't re I didn't realize I I thought that if, if that makes no. sense but exactly but yeah but and now it's like mm. I'm always asking the question why am I being triggered whenever I'm like mm -hmm. feeling um like hurt by something or like then mm. I'm like oh hang on why why is that and I I realize I'm no longer I am not my thoughts anymore but, no no exactly um, but so, so yeah so I have I understand where you're coming from and and mm. it's um I think it's it's sometimes hard for people to get there um if they've been through a lot and they don't and nothing like that has ever happened to them like an NDE mm -hmm. or a, mm. you know or it's because it's uh, takes a lot of self-healing and it's oh. it's a big journey to to go through but it's yeah so anyway sorry side, mm -hmm. side track there but, uh, no, but <laughs> I love I love digging deep in these things yeah but then, so, so nice when yeah. yeah so so when did your second NDE happen uh that was like three and a half years later um mm -hmm. and that was at my home and uh I had been out it was in the middle of the summer, so it was really warm. And I, we had been out swimming the whole day. And uh, I came back kind of late uh, in the evening. And my older son was there, and he was like 17 at the time, I think. And we were like uh, uh, really hungry, but we were just about to... Uh, we had a little a little hamster. Mm -hmm. Can, no, was it called a hamster in English? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah? Hamster. Uh, a little it's the same. Pet, yeah, yeah, it's the same. <laughs> it's hamster <laughs> <Okay>. in Swedish. <laughs> yeah, it's very hamster. Yeah, yeah. A, a small one. Hamster. A small hamster. Yeah. yeah, so so we just had to, uh, well, we wanted to talk to that little hamster first. So we, we sat down uh, on the floor, him and I, my son and I, and we uh, checked on the hamster and he, I, I had it in my hand like this. And he like changed the water, filled up the water bottle and changed the food and things. And then we uh, stood up and he gave me a hug and he was like in my arms like this, standing on the floor of a living room. And he said, I, I, I'm really hungry. I have to get some, some sandwiches. And I was like, sure. And he left me on the floor to walk to the kitchen. We was like three meters over to the left. And then it happened again. It was the buzzing sound. Gosh. And then... I disappeared yeah and um it was kind of the same but this time I also this sounds pretty strange but I I felt my pulse so I was like and because in that kind of state I can't realize at all or even wonder about it that I can't I don't know I don't have any perception I don't have any hearing any eyesight anything like that but in some way, I, I perceived my pulse. So it was like I was in my pulse. Mm -hmm. It was like this. It felt like some kind of a grinding movement of this pulsation of the heart. Mm -hmm. And it also felt like I was even further into this realm of reality, where, where whatever it is, than the first time. It went really fast. And uh, like really at the bottom of it I, I can't describe this but it feels like there is a bottom of this it's like a, an abyss of mm -hmm. consciousness and I was even uh, further down in that uh, and the strange thing that happened when I came back from that time was that it, it took um, well it wasn't a long period of time it must have been like 10 seconds or 15 seconds maybe from uh, the moment that I got my eyesight back, my senses came back, that I was still in the other time. So it was, the time passed extremely slowly. I mean, it didn't pass. The time doesn't pass in that realm. It is, the time is always now, mm -hmm. but it was still all, it, it was still now. And I, when I came back and I, my eyes kind of saw these 
brown rectangular shapes. And I had no idea what that was. It wasn't like just a regular, I lost my memory. Oh, where am I? What just happened? It wasn't like that. It was like, um, this doesn't make sense. What is, what is this? It was like the existing didn't make sense. Mm -hmm. uh, and I saw these colors, these shapes above those rectangular brown ones. And I saw this light on my left and I heard something. And it was my, the voice of my son, but I didn't know at the time I heard something. And it was like, I was, it was like I was with one foot in this reality and one foot in the, in the other one. Mm -hmm. And I just stood there and I felt like the pressure from the floor on the soles of my feet. And I didn't, I couldn't make any sense of it. Yeah. And it felt like it went on forever. And then again, the child, <laughs> it, it seems like it's always the love. Yeah. Somewhere it's always about the love. So I heard, I realized I heard him and it must, have, it must this must be a voice. And it must be a voice from someone who is important because that was the thing that like brought me back. It mm -hmm. was like something in me kind of decided, okay, I have to go back. He's talking yeah. to me and he's important to me and I have to be there. And uh, it was this buzzing sound again. And I was back in the body. And uh, he was like asking me, mom, did you want a sandwich? <laughs> 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 that was obviously real important, so important. things. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I have to answer him. Yes, I do. Yes. <laughs> <That's hilarious. laughs> yeah, it was. And that was really, really weird <laughs> coming back <laughs> to that question. Uh, yeah. um, so that was the second time. And I think that was like, uh, I still don't know what I believe. I'm still kind of the way I'm brought up with all this uh, scientific proof and stuff, so it's hard for me to let go of that altogether. Mm -hmm. uh, so I can't really, um, I have to believe what I have experienced. And yeah. I also want to believe what other people tell me that they have experienced. But the rest is, is like belief. I mean, like not knowing the rest is like religion. Mm -hmm. And that's fine, too. But I, I need to separate from myself what am I actually sure of and what yeah. is things that I could theorize about. So, and I'm not finished with the theorizing yet, mm -hmm. uh, but obviously there, there is another way of, of being that we usually don't have access to. Yeah. Uh, I know that for, for sure. Yeah. I think some things like will just, I guess we'll never really know until we cross over mm -hmm. yeah. for, for sure. And, uh, but, uh, like w when you were in this, um, uh, was it like, d did it feel like it like dark or was it? Yes, it was dark. Kind of, yeah. Cause I've heard about the dazzling darkness as some mm -hmm. call it. like this, mm -hmm. um, it's not like a negative darkness, like I would say, because like I'm scared of the dark ish, you mm -hmm. know. No. And but it's not like that. Like that they say it's like um well, like the way you described it, which is why they say dazzling. It's like um mm -hmm. but did did you ever feel like you know you 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 wanted to to like stay there or what was your No, I didn't feel that I wanted anything when I was there. I didn't have any ability to want or to wish mm -hmm. anything I didn't have any like human emotions mm -hmm. uh, so I wasn't happy and I wasn't scared and I didn't want to stay I didn't want to leave didn't want anything but one thing that I actually did experience like some kind of a feeling it was more like a curiosity mm -hmm. or like a be like being prepared like mm -hmm. I am prepared for anything mm -hmm. and when I and I when I described this for my kids the first time it took me some years before I talked to them about it I needed them to be big enough to be able to handle it and not be too scared mm -hmm. uh, I tried to explain it and the best thing I could come up with was like I felt like being a supercomputer mm -hmm. in standby you know it, there was no information available but it was like if anyone would have given me 
a tiny bit of information. I could do anything with it, or I could take all the information in the world. I can take it all on and solve anything. Yeah. It was like a, a vast, also very strong intelligence that was like, that could do uh, like, like an omnipotence, but there mm. wasn't anything available to know at yeah. that specific time. <laughs> yeah, this is so hard to describe. <laughs> I'm trying yeah. hard. <laughs> yeah, no, you're doing really well because uh, I, 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 I can't even imagine like what you went through because obviously it's it's so. Um, I, I only have my own thing, but my thing was um, uh-huh. uh, quite different. But uh, but just the the knowing and the being like the, the one thing I that I do feel like I have in common with uh-huh. your NDE uh-huh. um with, or the ego death was the knowing. Like I had an understanding of everything. Uh, yeah. All of a sudden, I just had this much, much, much larger understanding. And I also understood everything that Jesus had said and Buddha had said and all that. Oh, you know, you hear these yeah. wise things and you're like, yeah, that sounds good. And you think you get it, but you don't really get it. And now, no, it's, exactly. like I've, now it's like I've lost it again. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, oh, yeah. Well, it I'm having, <laughs> yeah, I feel like, I, you know, it did teach me that I am here to have the human experience and because sometimes um, I sort of uh, tend to seek, seek those things um, because mm-hmm. I'm just so curious of it. What I love mm-hmm. with, with your experience and with the way you're thinking is because when it comes from somebody that's very extremely logical and, and mm-hmm. just academically uh, like brought up and like, like there's always a you're always looking for those kind of answers and the need you know solutions and um yeah. and when something like that happens uh to somebody like like you or like a, mm-hmm. a doctor who uh, i've read and seen mm-hmm. countless ndes with with the doctors who mm. don't believe in anything like they're atheists mm. even and, mm. and they come back mm. and they're like okay i don't it's not like i know everything but I, I know that there is way more and I yes. can't even explain it. And how no. do you, how do you feel about death now? Like, how do you? Well, the thing is, I'm, I, I'm not afraid of death mm. uh, anymore. Well, I would rather have a normal NDE when I go, <laughs> like a happy <laughs> one, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like going through the channel and seeing your life with you and uh, yeah. meeting your, uh, <laughs> meeting my grandpa would be nice yeah. uh but mm. i think that um i don't believe in i don't believe in death anymore mm. do you know what i mean yeah because it felt like i did die i didn't i mean my, my body was still work, working parts mm. of my brain was still working my heart was still uh um uh in good shape and everything but uh, it felt like dying. It felt like losing everything, like losing your person. And if that is the last thing that happens to you, if that's the worst thing, mm. then there is nothing to be afraid of. Yeah. Because I, um, either you are there forever and that will be fine, or you come to some other place or you come back to yeah. another life. Uh, I don't know which yet. But um, no, I'm not afraid of, of death anymore. But the, the best thing is probably that I'm not that afraid of life either, if you know what I mean. Yeah. I have, have never been a terribly nervous uh, or anxious person, but, but pretty normally. But maybe, uh, you know, what you said, like, like a people pleaser. I wanted people to like me. Uh, also a little bit worried about my kids and uh, maybe sometimes about money and things. And and. Uh, now I'm not very worried about things anymore, yeah. especially not for myself. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's the best thing about it, I think. I absolutely love that because uh, it it seems it goes hand in hand. If you're if you're scared of death, you're scared of life, and if you're yeah. scared, not scared of death, you're not scared of life. Like goes hand in mm-hmm. hand all the time, mm. um, and I I really like that. Um, uh thank you so much for sharing your your stories it's been amazing like when is your biography coming out uh well i 
just actually started writing it like a month ago and I have some more writing to do. Um, but it depends on if there is a publisher who would like to publish it for me. In that mm -hmm. case, it depends on the publisher when it comes out. And otherwise I will publish it myself. So uh, hopefully within the year, but maybe mm -hmm. next year. Okay. But um, uh, it really feels like it took me so many years to be able to really talk about this, but now it's like this story has to be told. It's like I don't really, I don't really have any control over that anymore. It's like uh, it really wants me to tell it. I don't know why. Maybe there are people who can feel comfort in it, or maybe there is someone out there who has, uh, to whom something strange had happened to, and they weren't able to speak to someone about it. And I think we really need to listen to each other and not be that skeptical. Not as skeptical as I used to be. Mm. Really need to to hear each other out and not dismiss each other for telling a story about something that you haven't, that you don't know anything about. We don't know anything. Yeah. Or enough. Exactly. Just like for people to be open minded and mm. not, not scared to talk to people, like you said. And um, mm. uh, yeah, I, th I think uh, I think it is scaring a lot of people. I think a lot of people are waking up right now and mm -hmm. just. Um, I do I do think it's a bit frightening for a lot of people um but when, once you understand you know nothing it's really uh -huh. um uh, what's the word it's uh I'm in my Swedish head right now <laughs> like, <the feeling. laughs> it's, it's just it's just a liberating freedom. liberating it's liberating you. yeah <laughs> like, I thought you, you were gonna help me <laughs> yeah you are I know. Me. like this whole week I've been like in my English head and today I'm like yeah. now I'm like oh damn it what's the word <laughs> anyway <laughs> it's good week it's good we can help each other <laughs> yeah that's good that's so good. but keep uh, for the audience then like just to keep an eye and ear out for Anna's biography yeah it'll be, um, nice. it'll be in Swedish yes or... in Swedish mm. So uh, just keep an eye out for that. Uh, thank you again so much for joining me on the thank podcast. You. And, thank uh, you for I letting me be here. Yeah. You too. <laughs> you take care. Bye.